Welcome to our lecture online. Usually the parametric variables are given in terms of x and y as an expression or as a function of those parametric variables. So in this case, we have x as a function of t and y as a function of t. And let's say that in this particular example, the function for x is equal to 2t plus 1 and for y it's equal to 3t minus 2. If we graph those two functions, then that's exactly what it looks like. It looks like a straight line. Notice as t changes linearly, x and y will change linearly as well. And so here's an example. This is the location on the graph when t is equal to 0, when t is equal to 1, when t is equal to 2, and so forth. So you see there's, there's a constant change when we go from 1 to 2 to 3 to 4 and so forth on the curve. But sometimes we want to express the x and y, not in terms of the parametric variable t, but in terms of the variable s, the arc length along the curve. And so this is what we're trying to find now. We're trying to find x as a function of s and y as a function of s. Those, the s, of course, is the arc length along the curve instead of the parametric variables t. How do we do that? Well, the way to do that is to say, well, I'm going to find s as a function of t. I'm going to find a relationship between the parametric variable t and the arc length s along the curve. And we can do that by integrating over ds, small little segments on the curve, from t equals 0 to t equals t. In other words, let's start from where t is equal to 0 and end up anywhere on the curve where t is some other value not equal to 0. And the general equation is that ds can be defined as the, well, actually over here, let's go over here, ds dt is defined as this. So if we're going to integrate over ds, we have to multiply this times dt in order to do that integration. And so the integral will then look as follows. It's integral of the square root of the dx dt squared plus dy dt squared times dt. So now what we need to do is find out what dx dt is equal to and what dy dt is equal to based upon what we have over here. So in this case, dx dt is going to be equal to 2 and dy dt is going to be equal to 3. So now what we're doing is we're going to plug that in here. So we know that s as a function of t is equal to the integral from 0 to t of, now we have the square root of dx dt squared, so it's 2 squared plus 3 squared times dt. And so this is equal to the integral from 0 to t. That's 4 plus 9, that's the square root of 13 times dt, which of course, the only thing we have to integrate is dt. The square root of 13 come outside integral sign, so this becomes the square root of 13 times t evaluated from 0 to t. And of course, when we plug in 0, we get nothing. Plug in t, we get t. So this is equal to the square root of 13 times t. And remember, this was equal to s of t. So if s is equal to the square root of 13 times t, that means, therefore, that t cannot be replaced by s divided by the square root of 13. And if we do that in each of our equations right there, we could then say that x which is now equal to x as a function of t, but since t is equal to this, we can say that's equal to s divided by the square root of 13, which is equal to 2 times, instead of t, we write s divided by the square root of 13 plus 1. And for y, we can say y is equal to y as a function of t, which is s over the square root of 13, which is equal to 3 times s over the square root of 13 minus 2, like that. And so we can simplify it a little bit. We can say, therefore, that x is equal to 2 over the square root of 13 times s plus 1. And let's separate those two right here. And so now we can write that y is equal to, that would be 3 over the square root of 13 times s minus 2. So now what we've done is we've transformed our two parametric equations, which were first as a function of the parametric variable t, and changed them to two equations which are now a function of s, which is the variable that represents the distance traveled along the curve. So that's how we transform one to the other.